Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Evan Reese. I am the executive director of the U.S. Resiliency Council. I co-founded the U.S. Resiliency Council back in 2011 to educate the business community and the public about the considering uh, resilience to natural disasters as part of long-term sustainability. I want to thank you all for joining us today on the eve of the Great Shakeout, a yearly event that reminds us to be proactive about earthquake safety and preparedness. First, I would like to thank Maria Salinas, uh, President and CEO of the LA Chamber for hosting us today at their beautiful facility. But we've learned a lot in these past seven months, a lot of hard lessons, uh, and our economy has been rocked by COVID-19. And imagine this, without even a single building being damaged. When the big one hits, the impacts on our infrastructure, our communities, our businesses are going to be profound. We know that earthquakes are inevitable in California, but they don't have to become disasters. The business and government leaders you will hear from today know that investing in retrofitting our existing building stock and making our new buildings more resilient to earthquakes is essential to keeping our residents safe and protecting our economy. That's why we're meeting here at the LA Chamber, joined by BizFed and the LA Economic Development Council, to emphasize that resilience is not just good policy, it's good business. So let me kick off today's event by welcoming State Treasurer Fiona Ma to make a few remarks about the impacts earthquakes will have on our economy. Treasurer Ma. Thank you very much, Evan, for uh, convening us all here today and uh, to seismic, um, seismic, Op optimum seismic, excuse me, of the LA Chamber, BizFed, uh, and the LA EDC. Um, I actually moved to San Francisco in 1989, uh, and I experienced the Loma Prieta earthquake uh, during the World Series between the Giants and the A's, as I was reminded. And I've represented uh, the city and county of San Francisco uh, for the last 20 years, and so earthquakes are always top of mind. And so we are here today um, convened to talk about the importance of resiliency for our commercial buildings, for our apartment buildings. Uh, we have a very uh, robust program for residential uh, property owners called the Bolt, uh, Bolt and Brace Program, which Glenn Pomeroy will talk about of the California Earthquake Authority, but we need to do more. Uh, and I am also a member of the California Earthquake Authority where uh, we talk about not if, but when, the big one will happen. Uh, last month, we had a 4.5 magnitude earthquake here in Southern California, uh, as well as 20 small earthquakes in the Imperial Valley. So it is, again, top of mind as on the uh, day up before the Great Shakeout, um, that we really uh, think about it and try to uh, renew our focus on being better prepared. As the uh, Don McPherson said, true prevention is not waiting for bad things to happen. It's preventing things from happening in the first place. And I thank uh, all of my speakers here today, especially Assemblyman Nazarian, who has really focused uh, his legislative career on trying to do more for earthquake resilience and preparedness. Uh, Assemblyman Member Nazarian. Thank you, Treasurer Ma. It's always wonderful to work with you. Um, I wanted to just take a moment and ask for everyone to uh, take a moment of silence given the aggression that's taking place right now between Armenia and Azerbaijan, where more than 600 Armenians have uh, lost their lives for no reason whatsoever but to uh, uh, further the interest of a very despotic Azerbaijani government. So if I can have uh, everyone just take a moment of silence. Thank you. Uh, I'm Assemblymember Adrian Nazarian, and I have the wonderful pleasure of representing the central and southeast communities of San Fernando Valley. Having grown up in the valley, having experienced multiple earthquakes. Not sure if my voice will pick up. And having lived through and gone through not only the experience, the, rump, the, 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 the very 
uh, thunderous rumbling of the 94 Northridge earthquake, but then the aftermath of seeing the very institution that I was a student at, at Cal State Northridge, as well as all the other major institutions being impacted heavily, seeing parts of downtown being closed for months on end, seeing the job, job losses, and witnessing how the uh, region took an economic hit and was impacted severely. Uh, as When I got elected in 2012, one of the first things I did was to work on earthquake resiliency issues, and in three primary ways. One is inventory, looking at the past, and seeing what are the things that we need to do to get a good assessment of what we need to address. The other is currently providing incentives to make sure that those who want to make the appropriate investments do have the funds and the ability to stretch and make the appropriate investments. And looking into the future, uh, it's about strengthening our code, making sure that whatever building that we're investing in, moving forward, at a very minimal cost today, we make the appropriate upgrades so that in future years, we're not devastating by the impacts of job loss, of permanent moves potentially, and or uh, 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 weakening our economic fabric in the greater LA area. LA Times just two years ago reported about how the state of Arizona was preparing to accept to take in over 400,000 displaced Californians in case of an earthquake. So if our state, neighboring states are already being mindful of what to expect when the big one hits, we need to be more prepared than they are in making sure that we avert that crisis. And it's very important to think economically as well. For every dollar spent today, we are going to be saving $4 in the future in an event of a major seismic catastrophe. So thank you very much to the Chamber of Commerce for hosting us. Thank you to all the partners, including the Seismic Optimum, as well as the CAA, and I, I, my hats off to the wonderful work that the California Earthquake Authority has done. We have programs at every level, starting from the individual single family household, where you can get a $3,000 grant provided through the CEA to the loan program that is administered through the treasurer's office that, cu that culminates at $250,000 loan amounts. And then uh, uh, obviously, if when we are to pass a statewide incentive program, that would have a higher amount as well. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone, and th thank you so much for those comments. Uh, my name is Maria Salinas. I'm the president and CEO of the Los Angeles Area Chamber of Commerce. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you uh, to our home here uh, at the LA Chamber. And it is truly an honor to be standing here with this coalition of um, our uh, elected officials, our esteemed treasurer, Ma, our business organizations, and Optimum Seismic, who has been leading the way in so much work around preparedness. Uh, on the eve of the great, uh, great shakeout, um, it really is important that we bring together this coalition of business leaders that understand the economic impact if we don't focus on preparedness, if we don't look at those key uh, issues that need to be addressed not only by the large corporations but by those small businesses and so when we talk about launching a new resiliency advantage webinar uh, program it's because of all those businesses that are here in Los Angeles those small businesses that need to take advantage of the programs that are available so that they learn and understand how to prepare we cannot let an earthquake create another disaster in California. I think we've gone through several uh, this past year, and if it's taught us anything, is if there is something that we can prepare, something that we can do and take advantage of, that we need to make sure that our businesses are part of that solution, and one way of doing that is through preparedness. So I'm very pleased to be part of the coalition of business leaders that are here with you today that are part of the group that really believes that we can, we can change those outcomes, that through preparedness we can save and the next economic disaster that might, ha might happen here. 
being a lifelong Angelino. I know what it's like to experience everything from those big earthquakes to the little shakes and uh, making sure that uh, we are united and that we bring forward a coalition that can help address any issues that we might see in those type of, with those type of disasters is something that the chamber is very proud to stand behind. So thank you for having us here. Thank you for joining us. I am happy to introduce uh, Tracy Hernandez who will speak to you next. Thanks, Maria. Um, I'm Tracy Hernandez, the founding CEO of BizFed, the LA County Business Federation. It's a united group of over 200 existing business organizations, of which the LA Chamber is one of our, the founding member that we got started 12 years ago. These 200 business groups have 455,000 companies as their members, and we employ over 4 million people right here in the greater LA area. Representing that great swath of businesses and communities of every shape and size, every industry sector, and all the geography of the county, we understand the importance of seismic resilience, being ready, and getting prepared. Now in 2020, right now, despite these unusual times, believe it or not, 2.3 million people in LA County have signed up to be a part of the Great Shakeout tomorrow. And you can still get involved. You can join, you can sign up at shakeout.org slash California slash how to participate and get involved tomorrow. It's all happening via video conference. From far-reaching impacts of the COVID pandemic to the widespread destruction caused by wildfires in our surrounding areas, preparation and resiliency has never been more key to our business community's survival. We must be resilient to ensure our buildings stand, our economy hums, and our employees are safe, first and foremost. We must safeguard our investments, our region, and all who live right here. When a building collapses during an earthquake, an owner or an a leasee is left with no operating business, the communities face further extensive economic damages and workers lose their livelihoods. These impacts of these events can be prevented and that's why we all stand here today. We're going to prepare for the future of earthquakes, as Maria said, not if, but when to prevent physical and economic damage within all of our communities, all 88 cities in the county. And during this time, we face a lot of questions. We have our treasurer, Ma, and assembly member, Nazarian, and we're working on policies right now as we speak. At the state level, what does the state need to do? They're doing a lot, how can they do more? At City Hall, what can we do with the 88 cities? And we're working on those policies so that we can shore up our properties, our businesses, and the cities throughout our region. Our coalition is called New Resilience Advantage, and it's a seminar series that begins later this month. And you can all participate, you can get involved. It's easy to find at bizfed.org, among many other places. We encourage all local businesses and organizations to participate, because what are you gonna do? You're gonna learn how you can better prepare for and respond to natural hazards that we all have a fact of life in the way we live here in California. It faces all of our communities. Get involved today. The next colleague that will speak today is from the Los Angeles Economic Development Corporation, Stephen Chung, the Chief Operating Officer. Stephen? Thank you, Tracy. Good afternoon, my name is Stephen Chung. I'm the Chief Operating Officer for the Los Angeles County Economic Development Corporation. LADC is dedicated to advancing opportunities and uh, prosperity for all businesses, all employees, all residents, all Angelinos. And we work collaboratively with local businesses, organizations, and leaders to see the trends early and put our energies where we can make a huge difference. We're here today because many of our businesses here in Los Angeles remain unprepared for a major seismic event, such as the one we experienced in Northridge in 1994. The business community saw devastating impacts from the Northridge earthquake, with a 6.7 magnitude earthquake damage or destroyed more than 80,000 structures throughout the Los Angeles region, including many businesses. And the economic impact was well above $50 billion to the local economy. 
And due to damages and loss uh, sustained, many of the businesses never reopened and thousands of jobs were lost for good. There are small businesses that provide jobs and economic activities that power our communities. We want to make sure that we don't find ourselves in the same devastating situation once again, and businesses need to start taking actions today. So doing so will really help us speed up the recovery and ensure that they're able to bounce back quickly in the event of an earthquake and other natural disasters as well. As many businesses continue to struggle and to survive during the pa uh, pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, this doesn't seem like uh, a very good time. But as uh, some of the speakers mentioned earlier, the, coming, the, the upcoming uh, earthquake is going to be happening, so we need to be prepared and we need to stop, start making steps towards resiliency. And I want to assure you that by taking these simple steps, you're able to safeguard your business and you can save a lot of money and also heartache in the future as well. At the LAEC, we created an earthquake guide, the Preparing for Business and Earth After an Earthquake Guide. And this step-by-step -step instruction will give you simple, basic steps in terms of what you need to prepare for and how you need to uh, get ready for some of the, the major action steps that you need to do. Some people might think it might be a bit overwhelming for them to take on these steps, but I assure you, by taking one step at a time, you're gonna ensure safety for not only yourself, but your employees as well. These free tools, including the Resilience, uh, resilience Advantage webinar that some of the speakers mentioned earlier, will be able to help you form a strong foundation to prepare your business for the future. So therefore, we are encouraged and we urge all businesses in joining us to make that commitment to preparedness today. Do it not only for your business, but for your employees and for the county which you're a part of. The future of Los Angeles depends on you. Thank you so much. And next, I would like to introduce Glenn Pomeroy from the, uh, the California Earthquake Authority. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Glenn Pomeroy, CEO, California Earthquake Authority. A big pleasure to be with all these folks today. The CEA is the state's not-for-profit earthquake insurance company. It was formed in the wake of the Northridge earthquake, after which private insurance companies didn't want to so much be in the earthquake insurance market anymore. So the state formed us, a not-for-profit insurance company, basically. We're not a state agency, but we're formed by the state, and we're, we're managed by public officials. The governor, the state treasurer, uh, uh, the insurance commissioner, Tre uh, Treasurer Ma, such a forceful leader for this uh, organization. Our, our public mission, our not-for-profit public mission, educate, mitigate, and insure. Educate Californians against the risk, which we're such a proud uh, participant in the Great California Shakeout Drill tomorrow, 10-15, on October 15th. Uh, insure. Uh, providing earthquake insurance uh, possibilities for homeowners who wish to protect their home against that risk. We now have over one million uh, policyholders throughout the state. But importantly, mitigate. Help Californians understand what steps they need to take if they live in an older home to make it safer so it's not so prone to fall off the foundation when the ground shakes. Uh, we, we, uh, we've designed standards, we provide education, and we have a grant program, as Assembly Member Desirian mentioned, with some funding to provide grants of up to $3,000 to homeowners who qualify and are selected in a drawing that we hold each year. Assembly Member Desirian was a driving force in, in making sure the state uh, put resources into this so we can retrofit more homes, and we have now retrofitted over 12,000 statewide and over 6,000 in L.A. County alone. We'll be at 7,000 before the year's out. <clears throat> So it's a wonderful program, but we're just getting started. Uh, there are over a million homes uh, in the state that need just that basic kind of retrofit, so we have so much work to do. It's so important that we find ways to put more resources together so we can help more Californians take the steps necessary uh, to get that home strengthened. Cities will recover if homeowners have the financial ability to, to survive the earthquake, if they have a home to live in because it's habitable, because it's been strengthened and wasn't destroyed in the earthquake, so that those folks, those Angelinos, Los Angelinos, can be the customers uh, and the workers of the businesses, because it'll be the businesses that will be the key to economic survival uh, after the next big earthquake. So with that, um, thank you for allowing me to be here today, and I'd like to introduce uh, Ali Sahabi, the, uh, the uh, uh, CEO of, Optimist, uh, uh, of uh, uh, Optimum Seismic, uh, um, someone who I must say, someone who I must, I must say, I, I, I messed up the pronunciation of the name, uh, uh, but, uh, but Ali is a real mover and shaker in the space, if you don't mind the pun. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Treasurer. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, 
our, my colleagues uh, have said a lot of the important messages that we are here to convey and I really appreciate all of you for being here and what's really significant about this event uh, you may ask I think this is the most powerful representation of collaboration or a coalition as uh, Maria referred to of businesses, government, and community leaders. This is a true representation, very powerful. Everyone here, we represent uh, the biggest county economy in United States of 10 million population and more than 400 billion of uh, volume of business on annual basis. What are we trying to convey here today? The fact that we recognize the threat of the next seismic event. What the scientists, what the seismologists, what have been warning us about, uh, about all of our wonderful uh, engineering schools, it's real. The fact that we, it's real, and the fact that we need to educate our business community about the fact that this is real, and we need to be prepared. A silver lining of COVID-19, what we've been all experiencing these last six months, is the fact that we can see what happens if we are not ready, if we are not prepared. So we need to get prepared. That's our message. Our businesses have to be prepared. Why do they need to be prepared? Because we employ millions of people, as Tracy mentioned. Uh, our organizations represent people, uh, businesses that employ millions of people. And if the businesses stop operating because their, their buildings are damaged, people won't have jobs. People can put food on the table. People cannot make payments on their home mortgages. So that's why it's important we, we bring attention to our business community to be prepared. Another fact is that we are at the tipping point now. For 40 years, our engineering uh, industry, like we have a representative here Ken Odell, right over there, who is happy to discuss this with you all, from our Southern California Structural Engineers Association. For 40 years, we've been finding solutions, how to retrofit buildings, how to be prepared the build environment for the next big one. And the fact is now we're at the tipping point where we know we can prevent many injuries, death, and potential economic damage to our buildings. Some buildings more than others. Some types of buildings more than others. But we can, uh, we can do that. For example, our multifamily buildings, which represent the most affordable stock of housing here in, in the state of California. These are buildings that if we wanted to replace I think Treasurer Ma would be the best person because she pays for a lot of those billions. billions. They cost about $700,000 to rebuild each unit. Now, is it better for us to spend $5,000 or $10,000 to protect them by a big percentage? Of course, we cannot guarantee that everything that our structural engineers do are going to make us earthquake proof. But the fact is we know through research that we can, we can avoid or we can significantly lessen the damage. And therefore, so this is the tipping point. We know we can do it. Now we just have to have the will to decide we, we want to change our future and be the heroes of our, our future. With that, I want to invite someone that is responsible to keep us all safe here in City of Los Angeles, our Chief Resiliency Officer with City of Los Angeles, Aaron Gross. Aaron? Thank you, Ali.
Uh, on behalf of Mayor Eric Garcetti, I just want to join this coalition, support this coalition. The economic viability of the city is of utmost importance. And as we know, after a major shock, economic challenges follow. And if our business community is resilient, not only do we protect the employees and customers of those businesses, but we protect jobs and we protect the economic viability of this city. So on behalf of Mayor Garcetti, I'm so happy to join this coalition. A resilient city requires partnerships and partners, and these partners and this partnership is amazing and will help make for a much more resilient city. Thank you so much. I'll invite Evan Reese. All right, well, I want to thank all of the speakers who participated this afternoon. I think what you've he heard today is clear. It takes all of us, business, government, and engineering leaders to make the public and our businesses more safe in earthquakes. California's, California's communities face incredible challenges if not prepared for disasters. And I literally think everybody up here today has said it, so you should remember it. It's a matter of when, not if, the earthquake occurs. By understanding the economic and social impacts that earthquakes can have on our communities and our local economies, all of us here hope to help businesses find proactive ways to make their structures resilient. The good news is that becoming resilient is not as difficult as it may seem, and it will have benefits in both the short and the long term. The U.S. Resiliency Council and Optimum Seismic are pleased to announce the publication of part two of our white paper on the earthquake benefits of seismic retrofit and resilient design. In this white paper, we showcase success stories about businesses, large and small, that have invested in resilience, and we provide strategies for those that want to. The USRC and Optimum Seismic are also excited to launch a year-long series called The Resilience Advantage. This series will include interviews with public and private sector leaders, engineering and academic experts, as well as an interactive uh, uh, tools with the audience on what it takes to become more resilient in our homes, our businesses, and our communities. With every emergency, we have the opportunity to learn. From the great San Francisco earthquake of 1906 to the Northridge earthquake of 1994, we have learned the importance of retrofitting buildings and investing in earthquake preparedness throughout the state. Even during this current crisis, we are learning the value of preparation and planning. So let's not wait for the next disaster to catch us off guard. Let's be proactive and build a resilient future. Thank you again for joining us today, and now we'll begin Q&A for anyone who would like to ask some questions. I do. Um, Emily Valdez, KX 1070. How many buildings do you estimate in Los Angeles businesses need this earthquake retrofitting? Aaron, would you have any? In, in LA City Sorry, itself. In LA City, yeah. In LA City, the, the, actually, the LA City did a, yeah, LA City did a inventory, uh, and it's one of 14 jurisdictions throughout the state that have done inventories, and there's about 15,000 structures that uh, fall into the vulnerable category, just in LA City alone. One more question: Are we talking about um, retrofitting as an extra step? Two, or are we talking specifically about those 15,000 buildings right here? Those are the buildings, and there's over 150,000 buildings statewide that would need that kind of retrofitting, are important so that the residents of those buildings, or the employees of the buildings, or the tenants of the building, know that they'll be safe in an earthquake. Modern codes have only been around since the, the late 1990s, really, is the Northridge earthquake that really ushered in our era of modern codes. So, Almost 90% of buildings in major cities were built before the 1990s. I have another question if no one does uh, My second question is, what kind of help is there for business uh, business owners? Because right now, you know, everything's tough for everyone right now, so we may not think this is the best time. What kind of loan or grants or what kind of help is available? Well, we know uh, that the California Earthquake Authority is offering grants to homeowners who would like to retrofit their homes. Of course, that's the most important thing where we live. Um, I can certainly speak to the U.S. Resiliency Council is working with major lenders like Fannie Mae and HUD and insurance uh, industry to provide discounts 
for business owners that retrofit their buildings or design to higher standards. Everybody benefits when we make our buildings more resilient, not just the owner. It's also the tenants, the people that lend on those buildings, the customers, the cities to maintain their tax base. So we all would like to work together, I believe, to provide those kinds of incentives so that everybody that's sharing in the benefit can also share in the costs. Yeah. I just wanted to add in response to your question, resilience goes beyond seismic, uh, seismic retrofitting. Seismic retrofitting is really important, but there are a lot of low cost and no cost ways for businesses to be more resilient, including making a plan, including uh, tying down things, including being aware of what may shift during an earthquake. So in addition to some of the uh, amazing funding programs, there are also low and no cost ways for businesses to be more resilient. By the way, very specific though to what you're asking, there's two programs. One is the uh, Seismic Safety Loan Program through the California Treasurer's Office that I was talking about earlier, up to 250000 And there's a, 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 under a PACE program in California, you're going to be able to... I'm not going to be able to carry you. Under the, PACE pro, under the PACE program in California, you'll be able to also borrow money and pay it off through your uh, mortgage as well. So there's two programs available as well. Are there any other questions? A lot of us will be around afterwards if you have any specific questions or want to talk to us. If there are no other questions, again, we want to thank you so much for attending today. And again, a thank you to all our great speakers that have uh, come here today.